A Bear Named Winnie by J.C. Kane, illustrated by Josh Burnett. Alone in the Woods, Summer 1914. In a forest in Canada, a black bear cub wandered all alone. Tall dark trees towered above the small bear. Hungry animals roamed nearby. Luckily for the orphan cub, a trapper was in the woods. The trapper was checking to see if he'd caught a squirrel or a fox in his traps. Instead, he saw the scared, confused bear cub. The trapper couldn't take care of the cub himself, so he decided to bring her to the busy train station in a nearby town. Maybe a person who loved animals would buy her. The trapper's decision to help the cub was an act of kindness. Throughout the bear's long life, many other people took steps to make sure that she was safe and cared for. Black bears. Black bears live mainly in forests, and they love to climb trees. They make cozy nests called dens in caves, hollow trees, or other hidden spots. Cubs are born in these dens in the winter and don't come out until spring. The young bear in this photo is about the age that the trapper's cub was when he found her. A Bear for Sale August 24, 1914 Puffing and chugging, a train pulled into the White River Station, carrying soldiers headed for an army camp near the city of Quebec. Harry Colburn was one of the soldiers. When he hopped off the train, he saw a bear cub on a chain and stopped to pet her. The cub licked his hand. Harry felt sorry for the gentle cub and decided to buy her. Harry handed over some money to the trapper and led the cub to the train. He called his bear Winnipeg, Winnie for short, after his hometown in Canada. Harry Colburn loved animals. He was not only a soldier, he was a veterinarian or animal doctor. His job was to look after the arm, army horses and make sure they stayed healthy. Army Life Fall 1914. Harry and Winnie rode the train to the training camps. Six weeks later, they sailed across the ocean to another army camp in England. Not far from the city of London, Winnie made herself at home in the new camp. She lived with the soldiers in a big tent. At night, she slept under Harry's bed. During the day, she played with the soldiers, following them around like a puppy. As Winnie grew bigger, she discovered new ways to have fun. One night, she crept out from under the bed, climbed the pole in the center of the tent, and gave it a shake. The soldiers were afraid she'd bring the whole tent crashing down on their heads. From then on, Winnie slept outside the tent, tied to a pole. Like all black bears, Winnie was a good climber. Bear Paws Black bears have five toes on each paw. Their claws are curved and are about two inches long. Long curved claws are good for climbing trees. A Big Decision December 1914 Winnie stayed at the army camp for two months. Then Harry and the other soldiers had to go fight in the war they'd been training for. Winnie was not allowed to go with them. Harry had to think fast. Where could Winnie stay, happy and safe, while he was away? The London Zoo wasn't far from the army camp. Perhaps Winnie could stay there. Harry told the zoo officials what a gentle, friendly bear Winnie was. They agreed to take care of her while Harry was gone. Harry drove Winnie to her new home. Harry promised the zoo officials that he would return for Winnie after the war. Did you know the London Zoo started out as a place for scientists to study live animals? Many of these animals had never been seen in England, and that's one reason why crowds came to visit the zoo. New Friends, 1915 to 1919. Winnie seemed to like bears as much as she liked people. She quickly became friends with two little brown bears her own age. An older bear didn't get along with Winnie at first, but when he realized how gentle she was, he became her friend too. In a few days, all four bears were running and playing together. People came to the zoo just to watch the bears. Many stayed to play with Winnie. Children were allowed to pet and feed her. Winnie was the only bear in the zoo gentle enough to play with people. When Winnie was almost five years old, the war ended. Harry traveled back to London to get his bear and take her home to Canada. But then he saw how happy she was with her new friends and how much visitors loved her, so he agreed to let Winnie stay in the zoo. Knock, knock. 
At the zoo, iron fences kept people and bears away from each other. Winnie was the exception. She was so gentle and friendly that children were allowed to come close to her. When they knocked on the door of her den, she would open it and come out to play. Winnie ate from the children's hands, let them pet her, and gave boys and girls rides on her back. A Small Boy, 1924 One day when Winnie was about 10 years old, she had a new visitor, a young boy named Christopher Robin Melney. After the first visit, Christopher Robin saw Winnie whenever he could. He brought her milk to drink. Once he had a birthday party in her den with Winnie and some of his friends as guests. Christopher Robin loved Winnie so much that he named his own teddy bear Winnie the Pooh after his new friend. Christopher Robin with his teddy bear Winnie the Pooh is in the picture. Teddy bears. Teddy bears are named after Theodore Teddy Roosevelt, a president of the United States. Once on a hunting trip, Roosevelt refused to shoot a bear. After a store owner read about the president and the bear, he started selling toy stuffed bears and then named them teddy bears. And that's what children have called them ever since. A book about a bear, 1925 to 1928. Christopher Robin's father, A.A. A. Milne, was a writer. One day he wrote a story about Winnie the Pooh. After the story appeared in an important newspaper, Milne wrote more stories about his son's toy bear. Then he put all the stories together into a book. In the book, Winnie the Pooh is called a bear of little brain, but he has a kind heart. He loves to eat honey and write poems. He is as gentle and friendly as the real Winnie. So in this picture, Christopher Robin was six years old when the photograph photograph was taken. He sits on his father's lap with Winnie the Pooh. Another book. A. A. Milne wrote a second book of stories about Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh. By then, Christopher Robin was eight years old. The book embarrassed him because it showed him as a little boy. His father promised not to write any more books about Winnie the Pooh. Winnie Lives On Winnie the Bear remained at the London Zoo for the rest of her life. People had always been kind to this friendly bear, and Winnie was always gentle to the people she met. Not many people today know about the real Winnie, but for almost a hundred years, children all over the world have read about Winnie the Pooh, the storybook character inspired by the little bear cub who was rescued from the woods. You can see the statue of Winnie and Harry at the London Zoo.